So this is a, a multi-center randomized uh, trial uh, of the two-year data of the talent uh, study. So we know that there was a recent meta-analysis by Bangalore showing that uh, ultra-thin strut stents defined as less than 70 micrometers in thickness reduced the incidence of target lesion failure uh, compared to the modern uh, generation stents that we used. We presented the data of the uh, one-year uh, 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 data of the talent study, which was a prospective multi-center, all-comers randomized controlled trial of over 1,400 patients which was compared in a non-inferiority uh, 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 fashion to the Zion Severolimus eluting stents in terms of device-oriented composite endpoint up to one year. And this was published in The Lancet earlier this year. The current presentation is of the same trial, but at two years looking at the ultra-thin strut supraflex stent against the uh, 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 Zion stent. These were the sponsors. The funding was from the manufacturers of the stent, SMT, for, uh, which was an unrestricted uh, educational grant, and the clinical research organization leading this was Cardialysis. And I'm speaking on behalf of my co-authors, Rob De Winter, Upendra Kaul, uh, Patrick Sarais, and Yoshiuri Numuro, and the, all the other investigators. So what is a superflex stent? As I've said, it's ultra thin. So ultra-thin defined as less than 70 micrometers. This is 60 micrometers th uh, uh, thin across all the stent diameters. And this is important to remember because there are other competitors where they are ultra-thin, but in the smaller stent diameters. The Superflex stent is ultra-thin across all stent diameters from the 2.25s to the 4.5, uh, uh, and even the 2.0 is 60 micrometers. It's a biodegradable polymer matrix. Um, the drug is sirolimus, 70% released within seven days, and there's a sustained release over the next 48 days. The talent study flowchart was this. We've presented this before. 1,435 patients from 23 enrolling sites. 720 were randomized to the Superflex arm, 715 in the Everolimus arm. The key thing that I want to point out to you, uh, to the audience, is the uh, information on the left-hand side of this uh, slide. This was an all-comers population. There was no selection criteria applied to the type of patients who could receive either stent. It was any ischemic Conry syndrome, any type of lesions, including vein grafts, including CTOs, and there was an unrestricted use of drug eluting stents. So it's important to remember that this study was reflective of real world practice. At the end, we had 704 patients at follow-up at 720 days in the intention to treat analysis in the Superflex arm and, and 705 in the Everolimus uh, uh, science arm. The primary endpoint, device-oriented clinical endpoints, uh, composite endpoints was cardiac death, target vessel MI, and um, clinically indicated target lesion revascularization. As you'd expect from uh, a randomized study, most of the clinical characteristics were matched. There was this by chance uh, in the Zion arm, there were significantly more at 7.7% patients who underwent, who had previous CABG. Lesion characteristics, once again, matched as you'd expect from a randomized study. The one difference was that the maximum balloon diameter used to post-dilate the stent was slightly higher in the, in the Supraflex arm at 2.52 versus 2.46 in the uh, uh, Zion stent. And this may just reflect familiarity with the Zion stent that the majority of operators use. So the results at one year for the uh, 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 device-oriented composite of cardiac death, target SLMI, and cardiac uh, clinically indicated target lesion revascularization was this. Um, uh, 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 we found that at one year, for non-inferiority, which is what this study was powered for, it was very strongly uh, 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 non-inferior to the Zion stent at one year. What happened to two years? Similarly, you have the Superflex in red, you have the Zion stent in blue, cumulative incidence on the y-axis, and time since index procedure on the x-axis. And you can see that out to two years, uh, this finding in the one year was maintained, 
and that it will remain non-inferior out to two years. What about cardiac death up to two years in the intention to treat? So there was this slight difference at one year which we could not explain. We felt it was a play of chance, but it was very important to continue following up these patients. And at two years, as we thought we would find, there was absolutely no difference in cardiac death up to two years between the Zients and the Supraflex arm. Target vessel MI up to two years, once again at one year, no difference. At two years, no difference. Numerically smaller for the Supraflex arm, but statistically not different. What's about clinically indicated target lesion revascularization in the intention to treat arm? So we found that at one year, this was surprising also, that at one year it favored the supraflex arm. And once again, there was no strong uh, mechanism for this beyond the thin strut, but out to two years, when we followed patients up to two years, there was no difference at all in the target lesion revascularization uh, 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 at that point. What we are worried about for our patients, what we are worried about as physicians is definite or probable stent thrombosis up to two years. There was no difference and remarkably low rate at one year for both stents, and this was maintained out to two years. So not only remarkably low, but non-inferior uh, compared to the Zions out to two years, and the Zions stent is, is proven to have a low uh, uh, incidence of stent thrombosis. If we then switch to the per-protocol analysis, so this included not intention to treat, but per-protocol. So these were patients who received only the assigned study stent. And at one year, we had this finding that the clinically indicated target lesion revascularization in the per-protocol analysis favored the supraflex stent. And it was significant, the p-value was significant at 0.021. However, out to two years, this difference was not maintained, and both the device-oriented composite uh, 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 events at two years and the CI clinically indicated target lesion revascularization out to two years, whilst numerically smaller for the supraflex stent, there was no statistically significant difference between the two products. So in summary, Chairman, the Superflex biodegradable polymer serolimus eluting stent demonstrated comparable two-year clinical outcomes to the leading drug eluting stent worldwide, which is the Zion Severolimus eluting stent in, and this is an important point, in an all-comers population. Patients were not selected. They included acute coronary syndromes, vein grafts, CTOs, everything. The lower rate of clinically indicated target lesion revascularization that was seen in the supraflex arm at one year in the per protocol analysis only was not seen out to two years. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Questions? We have a couple of minutes. So the uh, per-protocol analysis is actually quite interesting from the standpoint of a non-inferiority trial, just because if you'd use ITT, it tends to make the arms look more equal. So yeah. uh, from the standpoint of a non-inferiority trial, we're actually more interested in the per-protocol and assigned stent analysis. Uh, we notice that there's a little bit of a step up in revascularizations at one year. Do you think this was driven by mandatory one-year angiography or? No, so there was no, it was all okay. clinically driven. There was no mandatory one-year angiography uh, in, in the trial. It yeah. was all clinically indicated. Yeah. So the curve's a bit peculiar in that about 360 mm. days, there's yeah. an uptick yeah, of events uptick. In, in just the one arm. Uh, do you have any potential explanations for why that might be? No, I, I, uh, this is what we found. Um, could it be because of the, um, you know, the patient characteristics, because we had this unexplained event for uh, uh, mortality in the per-protocol analysis, uh, which we couldn't explain? I think it's just a play of chance. And, and the reason I say that is because when you follow these patients, as you've seen, after two years, it smooths out. Yeah, and that would be, probably be the expectation, both from what we think about the biology of thin struts, Correct. plus... Uh, you know, if we follow people sufficiently long enough, they're going to have a vent accrual at a steady rate in both arms. So, Correct. you know, we expect the difference to diminish over time. Yeah. More questions from the audience? No? I have quick questions out of curiosity. Why did you choose uh, Cyrolimus? 
Ah, no, this is something for the manufacturer. I suspect that it's... Uh, it's more available. It's, it's, it's widely it's available. It's, uh, you don't have to buy the product. It's, it's, it's um, generic. And, you know, it previously it's shown to work. And subsequent previous studies and subsequent studies have shown that, you know, it's as good as the other olimus compounds. But I think the main reason will have been its, its wider availability. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I want to invite next speaker, uh, Dr. Abdel Hakim Alali, who will give a talk: polymer-free drug corticoid versus bare metal coronary stent in patients undergoing 